Elapsed time can be a difficult skill for some students. Just like in general, telling time can be difficult, especially for third graders. The easiest way that I have found for students to work with elapsed time is to use something we call a T-chart. The T-charts that we use have a column that we call the add and a column that we call the new time. And as you'll see, using these T-charts makes it a little bit easier for the student to be able to figure out if I start at point A and go to point B, how much time is in between? And if I start at point A and have to add time or subtract time, what is the new time? We're going to take a look at some of the problems from the math workbook that go along with the lesson in the textbook, which is lesson 5.8. The first problem we're going to take a look at is number one. It tells us that our start time is 3.15 p.m. and our end time is 5.25 p.m. The first thing we notice is that both of our times are p.m.s, which means we won't cross the 12 o'clock hour. That makes it a little bit easier. We start with the 3.15 time and we add to it until we get to the 5.25 p.m. mark by adding hours and minutes. It doesn't really matter where you start. In this case, we see that we could actually add hours. If we add one hour to 3.15 p.m., our new time, which we put in the second column, would be 4.15 p.m. I can add another hour, and that would put our new time at 5.15 p.m. Now from here, I see I can't add any more hours, but I can add minutes. To get from the 15 to the 25, I add 10 more minutes, which would give me the final time that I am looking for of 5.25 p.m. Now all the student has to do is add the add column. That's why we call it the add column. So we have one hour two hours, because we always add the hours or the biggest amount of time first, and then our 10 minutes. So the elapsed time from 3.15 to 2.25 p.m. is 2 hours, 10 minutes. Now it will also work if we are given an amount of time to add or an amount of time to subtract. So let's take a look at number seven. It says we want 25 minutes after 1.15 p.m. Okay? So we start off with our time as 1.15 p.m. and we are going after that. Well, that means that I'm going to move forward in time, so I have to add to it. So, I can start by adding the smallest part of the minutes. So let's add the five minutes to the time we have. So by adding that, we end up at 1.20 p.m. Now all we have left of the 25 minutes is 20 minutes, which most students can add in one lump sum. If I add 20 minutes, then I end up with 1.40 p.m. Now, if that's difficult, the student can go in and continue to add in 5-minute increments until they get to 25, or they can add it in 10-minute increments, whatever is easiest for them to work with. You can also do the same thing if instead of after, it was before that time. And instead of adding, they would just subtract the time, and they could change the name of the column here to subtract instead of add. So when using elapsed time, the easiest thing to do is put the information in a t-chart so that the students can see the time being added or the time being taken away.